Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. Um, at time of recording, it is September 1st of 2024. Um, Officer Darren Burks of the Dallas Police Department was executed on August 29th, a Thursday of 2024. So just, just a few days ago, this guy was executed by a piece of shit person. Uh, this officer was sitting in his patrol car um, basically on break in between calls. He was just sitting in his car. I mean, not doing it like he wasn't like pulling anybody over. He wasn't getting out to investigate a suspicious person. Like he wasn't, he wasn't doing anything. He was just chilling in his car. Um, his cruiser. He had um, pulled into the spot where this other person had been at, um, and while sitting in his car, uh, this person approached him. Uh, apparently, this person had a uh, cell phone and was videotaping uh, the interaction while he was engaging in some type of conversation with this officer, uh, and then pulled their pistol out and shot this officer to death. Somehow, um, while this was happening, um, the officer made a radio transmission, a very brief one, um, either in, intentionally or unintentionally, it's unknown at this point, but a brief radio communication was made um, my interpretation of it was basically the radio the radio got keyed up like I don't think he made any noises or talked or anything like that um, I think the radio just keyed up uh, the dispatcher saw this uh, attempted to make contact with the officer was unable to make any contact with that officer and then the dispatcher uh, sent two other police officers to his location they knew his location based off GPS uh, those two officers responded to check on this officer and make sure he's okay. And they come under fire from the bad guy. Uh, one of them gets shot in the face. Um, and the other is shot and wounded. Uh, suspect uh, runs away from the scene. Uh, other officers go after that person. And they try to shoot at those other officers. And multiple officers return fire and killed that person um, on the scene. The press release uh, for this was not too long ago. Uh, I released the video on this press release. Um, they have not released any videos from this incident. They have not re released any body cam footage, dash cam footage, anything like that. Uh, during the press release, they did say that there is security camera footage showing this officer uh, being ex executed by this piece of shit person. And they said that during that press release, they said that uh, they would not show that video. And this is typical with uh, police agencies out there. They generally do not show the footage that depicts one of their officers being murdered and they do this out of respect uh, you know they don't want to have that released and people see it happening they don't want the family of the fallen officer having to see that and they don't want their their fellow officers having to see that I get it I understand it but I don't agree with it there is something to be learned from this incident. The lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. This guy was a teacher before he became a police officer. He was a math teacher for something like 17 years. Um, and then he became a police officer. He became a police officer just last year. Um, and he was not... Um, a police officer for, for very long before this happened. Uh, but 
he has something to teach. He is a teacher. And um, whenever the, uh, the dash cam footage or body cam footage comes out, of course, I'm going to do a breakdown on that incident, uh, talk about things, better explain what's going on, talk about things that I think are being done right and or done wrong. Um, but one of the one of the things that I kind of wanted to to go ahead and point out and talk about is being in your car and sitting around on a break. Or sitting around and doing a report on the computer, or if you're still doing handwritten reports, um, doing that. And how you do that safely. So, um, in law enforcement, and even in some aspects of private security, uh, a lot of the work is done from... A vehicle a patrol vehicle it is an office on wheels you go from point to point in this vehicle you go from work site to work site in that vehicle you uh, take your brakes sometimes in that vehicle um, when you're not on call you're usually sitting sitting in that vehicle um, it's pretty important piece for law enforcement um, and also for a lot of security so you spend a lot of time in a car and a car can be an extremely dangerous place obviously if it's in motion you're traveling on the roadway there's that inherent risk there, right? Like you, when you look at uh, CDC leading causes of death, um, you'll see that car wrecks are a big leading cause of death. So there's that risk right there. Um, and then when you start to look at the armed professionals working in and around vehicles, i.e. police officers, um, we see that uh, vehicles are a dangerous place to be in or around during a gunfight. Unless you are driving an up-armored vehicle, the bullets are going to have a higher chance of reaching you. And even if you are in an up-armored vehicle, given time and volume of fire, bullets can still get to you. You could be in the presidential limousine, the U.S. president's limousine. It can only stop so many rounds before it fails and bullets get to the inside of that vehicle armored vehicles only they only buy you time is what they do it's not that they are capable of indefinitely uh withstanding small arms fire small arms fire will eventually get inside of those up armored vehicles they just buy time that's all it is regular vehicles light-skinned vehicles bullets go through them very easily it's like a warm knife through warm butter even your very small calibers will go through vehicles super easy so being in a vehicle or around a vehicle during a gunfight is not where you want to be it is not a very good form of cover it can be used as, a, as an, an emergency form of cover if nothing else exists. But it should not be your desired place of cover. In my vehicle tactics class and other 
uh, schools, other instructors that teach vehicle tactics type of courses. Um, there's generally a ballistics portion of the class where you get to shoot the car, right? You get to shoot bullets through the door, shoot bullets through the windshield, etc., and and find out that cars don't stop bullets very well. In fact, they suck at doing it. So that's that's one aspect of of knowing the vehicle and knowing how unsafe it is to be in and around during a gunfight. It's just a very unsafe place to be. Now, going into vehicle tactics, if your vehicle is in gear, well then we hit the accelerator and get off the X. Right? V6 beats 9mm every single day. Or V8. Whichever. If the vehicle is out of gear, it's in park, then you are at a disadvantage. So when you are in your vehicle and you come to a place to sit for a period of time, either you're taking a break, you're working on a report, or you're just sitting there. You throw that vehicle in the park, even if it's turned on, the engine's running, it's idling, that vehicle in park, you are at a disadvantage because you are not able to get off the X quickly. And under fight, flight, freeze response, you may not be able to actuate the gear selector efficiently or effectively and smash the accelerator to get off the X. So if you're going to be parking somewhere, my recommendation is to keep the gear selector in drive. That way, if something were to suddenly happen, all you have to do is move that foot a couple inches to the right and smash that accelerator and speed off the X. My other recommendation if you're going to be parked somewhere is to find a location where you can spot most people approaching you. Now that can be a, a difficult thing to do, especially in an urban environment where you are surrounded by people. But there are certain properties uh, and layouts of buildings and, and geography, etc. that can make some places better to hang out at versus others. Um, you know, the classic finding one big empty parking lot and parking out in the middle. That way, from a 360, there's a long distance that people are going to have to traverse to get to you. If you're in the middle of this one big parking lot, that gives you the advantage of being able to see people approach you and be able, being able to have time to react. Versus if you park next to the side of a building, then if your driver's side door is next to that building, then someone can come around the corner and very quickly get to your vehicle and you not have enough reaction time to do anything about it. Versus if you was in the middle of a large parking lot and you had a... Um, a hundred yard radius around you that was clear there's nothing for people to hide behind and you can very easily see someone walking towards you uh, you would have a tremendous amount of uh, reaction time to be able to do something before someone got to you um, there may be other locations where you could back your vehicle into a spot to where the back of the vehicle 
is uh, up against the rear of a building and from from the back of that vehicle uh, looking left and right very long distance to corners of a building and so if someone wants to come around one of those corners uh, you can have a long enough uh, reaction time to be able to pull your vehicle further away from that building uh, or to get out of the vehicle or, or do whatever you need to do, right? Um, there are just, there's just too many what ifs, too many multitude of uh, design layouts of buildings and parking lots and geography to be able to say, you know, this. A, B, C, and X, Y, Z is the best parking option available. Uh, it's something that you're going to have to look at um, in your area of operation to figure out, hey, where is a good, safe place to be parking at? Um, because the reality of people just walking up on you while you're trying to do a report and surprising you, that exists. Um, in a lot of places, uh, officers will buddy up, um, you know, park in a parking lot where, you know, they're sitting driver's side door to driver's side door, and uh, usually there's a lot of, you know, jaw jacking going on in those moments uh, where they're parked side by side, but a lot of times, um, one officer is maintaining situational awareness while the other officer is working on a report or is on the phone with a citizen and doing an investigation or doing a follow-up, whatever, uh, so that officer can stay task-oriented on what they're doing and not be distracted of having to continuously look around and figure out if anyone's trying to sneak up on them. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for the night shift guys, this tactic also works well for uh, when one of them wants to take a cat nap, <laughs> one takes a cat nap, the other maintains situational awareness, and at that point, um, they're mostly looking out for the uh, the shift sergeant to make sure, um, you know, they're not getting caught. <laughs> um, but finding a good spot to park at, a safe spot to park at, uh, that can be a difficult thing to do. Um, but you have to find a good spot because if not, then bad things can happen. Now, I don't know, obviously, all the details about where he parked at and how this bad guy approached him, etc. Um, but um, my opinions and stuff on that will come out later whenever we do get to see uh, more detailed information about where he's parked at. Um, but uh, he was in his vehicle and someone began to approach him and so that brings up something else uh, if you're in your vehicle and someone is approaching you you don't want to be sitting in your vehicle while that person is approaching you um, you can have a couple options there you can either a throw that vehicle into drive and be able to ready to smash the accelerator if there's something that ends up being an issue with that person and you need to get off the X very quickly. Or get out of that vehicle and get yourself in a position to be able to fight if that person turns aggressive. Because you do not want to be sitting in the vehicle when that person turns aggressive because you are sitting in a death box at that point. So you either A, put the vehicle in drive so that you can be able to drive away quickly, or you get your butt out of that car so that your feet can be the, uh, the movement for you. This also brings into discussion or thought of handling people who want to come up with cell phones recording you and um, talking to you um, you know uh, with uh, smartphones and devices the way they are uh, and you know other things that have been going on in this country um, 
everyone seems to think that they have this inherent um, non-questionable right to turn on the video recording op, uh, app on their phone and start recording everything that's going on get super close in your personal space start asking you a bunch of questions um, and acting uh, oppositional or aggressive or challenging and think that they can do that for as long as they want without being checked without any type of repercussions whatsoever and you've got people out there who call themselves uh, first amendment auditors who purposely go out with video cameras and screw with police officers with the intent of getting these police officers to say something stupid or do something stupid so that they can a have that publicly posted on the internet uh, to embarrass them and then B uh, to give them something as far as ammo to take them to court and sue them and then win um, and it puts officers in a very bad situation because if the officers do something against these people who are recording in a public space um, they it can be construed and be held against these officers that they were violating somebody's First Amendment rights. So it puts officers in a very delicate situation, a very delicate position, where what the what these people are doing, they have a constitutional right to record with a camera um, where they're at, and the officer can't always do anything about it because if they do they as a government uh, agent are then violating that person's constitutional right to um, free speech and, and press so um, that then limits these, these officers ability to do things to keep themselves protected and I could only suspect that um, you know this dude came up to this officer with a cell phone recording it and this officer was probably trying to do his best um, to uphold that that person's constitutional right not to um, have the government interfere with their ability to have free speech or freedom of the press and so he was trying to, trying his best not to violate this guy's rights um, and being a, a nice, cordial person. And it ended up um, turning south for him because it put him in such a bad position that um, it was a lose-lose situation, essentially, when dealing with someone who's got the cell phone out in your face recording um, because... You know, it's it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. Um, it sucks. It really does. Um, and without having any more information to go off, can't really say a whole lot more because I just don't know a whole lot more, right? Um, but I wanted to at least go ahead and get this video uh, out there because uh, based off that press release, you know, we know some information and some of the information was he was sitting in his car, taking a break between calls, and some asshole approached him with a cell phone, recording him, engaging him in conversation, talking, and then pulled a gun out and shot him. Um, it's horrible. It, it, it really is. Um there is a war on police in this country and it's been going on for a few years now it's been going on ever since Obama started it and it's only getting worse um, nature abhors a vacuum and when there is an absence of some force um, 
another force is going to fill that vacuum. When you look back in history and how the police in this country held power, they filled that vacuum. It was a known thing. You don't fuck with the police. You fuck with the police and you're going to get your ass handed to you. Well, now it's not like that. Now people can fuck with the police and not have any repercussions whatsoever. Because if the police defend themselves, if the police do what's right, these assholes can sue them, have a jury who shares the same mindset, and then win this lawsuit. And then the police get smacked and say, no, you shouldn't be doing that. They lose money, lose jobs, and, uh, and then the police are put in a position to where they're basically like, well, uh, that didn't work out for Bob, so uh, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm just going to clock in. Clock in, clock out, get my pension and go. Um, not going to do anything else. I'm not, I'm not risking my career. I'm not risking my life. And so we are seeing across the nation right now, aside from just people attacking police and, and everything, we are seeing uh, criminals literally taking over this certain cities. I mean, mostly, you know, blue cities. <laughs> um, but these criminals are taking over. They are operating without any major repercussions. They are doing things without fear. Uh, it was just not too long ago, out of Aurora, Colorado, uh, a gang from South America was basically taking over an apartment complex armed with guns like like long guns too like visibly visibly armed walking around this apartment complex beating on people's doors going inside running the place right like a, a freaking um a seizure of this building and an occupation of this building as if they were like insurgents or something. And the police there are not doing anything about it. This would not have happened two decades ago, for sure. Never would have, like, if you, like, back in the 1980s, if you, if, if you would have told someone, hey, there's going to be some gang members from South America who are going to come into an American city and they're going to take over. And they're going to, carrying, they're going to go walking around, carrying rifles, going into an apartment complex and taking this bitch over and doing what they want and the police aren't going to do shit about it. You would have, you would have laughed them out their room. You would have looked at them and regarded them as someone who was incredibly stupid, mentally challenged. It would not have been feasible. It would not have been anything imaginable. Some of the other things going on in, in some of these large cities in, in a lot of our states just unimaginable like no one would have ever thought that it would be it could ever happen and now now 2024 we are seeing things happening that defy logic we are seeing criminals who basically aren't even getting a slap on the wrist anymore because slapping them on the wrist is, is traumatizing for a victim you know, because they look at these criminals as if they're victims of trauma. So you better not slap them on the wrist because you might tra traumatize them some more. <laughs> it's, it's 
it's crazy. It, it's crazy. And it's all leading to situations like this. Good people getting killed. Good officers being killed in the line of duty. And it's unacceptable. This is not the America that I want. And it's not the America that I want for anyone else. And I don't want it for my children. Something has to change. Something has to put things in reverse. We need to go back to making criminals fear the criminal justice system again. You know, like the like the campaign uh, slogan, Make America Great Again, we need to make the American criminal justice system great again. No more plea deals for violent offenders. None. Zilch. Nada. Why are we even entertaining the idea of giving a plea deal to a street thug in a murder case. What are they bringing to the table that puts them in a position to barter, to negotiate? It should be non-negotiable at that point. You're not bringing anything to the table to negotiate. You're a street thug murderer. You're going to prison for the rest of your life. We're going to trial. Good luck. We should not be giving them a plea deal whatsoever. Um, reduce sentences and, um, you know, these this, this restorative justice bullcrap. Uh, drug courts and, and mental health courts. It, it's all a bunch of bullshit. And we need to reverse a lot of this crap that has been put in place. Because all it's doing is, is it's emboldening the criminals. It is making them mentally tougher on what they do because there's no consequences for it. it, it it's, it's literally like looking at an elementary school and the kindergartners and the first graders are making a bunch of ruckus and are getting a bunch of rules made and they are getting a bunch of the uh, rules that had been existing for a while reversed and they are saying that um, you know it's unfair what's going on you know the principals and teachers don't need to be uh, having so much say anymore we need to have a say um, we want this we want that and the principals and the teachers are just standing back letting this shit happen letting these new rules come into effect in the schoolhouse that allow the kindergartners to do whatever the hell they want to do without any repercussions imagine that imagine an elementary school where the kindergartners and the first graders get to have some type of decision making like they get to decide what what the cafeteria menu is going to look like month to month. They're going to get to decide what the curriculum is going to look like. They're going to get to decide what the recess schedule looks like. You would look at that and say, well, that's stupid. You shouldn't give the kindergartners and the first graders any say in anything on what they're going to do. The only say they, they need to have is whether or not they're going to eat what is being provided to them. They can either eat it or not. They're going to go to recess at this time. They can either go up the big slide or not. They can sit on the tree. They get to have a, f a, a few little options on what they want to do when this thing is being provided to them but they don't get to they don't get to decide the schedule they don't get to decide what's going on they're fucking kindergartners they're first graders what? what puts them in a position to be able to say they know what's best for them they don't and so when you're looking at that in society you are seeing these people out there changing their rules, getting things changed. 
and we're sitting by letting it happen and no one is saying all right y'all need to shut up like this is stupid no one is putting these idiots in their place they're just letting them do whatever they want to do so like i said nature doesn't like a vacuum so when the police who have been you know in the past in charge and in their power has been uh, ever present and in, in feeling this void and keeping the bad people at bay. Now they are now they are stepping back. Now their power is not so much strong, and so when their power decreases, that creates this this void. And so, what's going to fill that void? Some other power, right? criminal elements are going to start to feel that void and um, usually you know the people who scream and yell and and beat their chest and, and break things and are the loudest um, and are the most violent uh, typically kind of come in charge and you know when we talk about violence you know let's not let's not make no mistake about it um, Yes, there is violence involved with police. There has to be. Or else no one will, will do what they're told, right? It's just like raising kids. You tell a kid, don't do this, or I'm going to spank you. Well, they're either going to heed to that, or they're going to find out that they shouldn't have done that because they're going to get spanked. Same thing with police. You're not going to speed down this road or else. Okay. All right. You were speeding down the road. Now you're getting a speeding ticket. Okay. Oh, you don't want to speed. You don't want to pay that speeding ticket. All right. Well, we're, we're going to come find you. And we're going to drag you out of your house and put you in a concrete box. And if you refuse to go with us, we're going to use force to bring you with us. It may hurt you. If you resist enough and increase the level of force enough, well, there's a possibility you might die. So, make no mistake about it, yes, um, there is violence associated with policing. It's, it's, it's obvious, right? Uh, there's nothing negative about it. You just have to have that, right? Um, and so, if the police are being neutered, and not being allowed to be the police and they can't go out and do the things that they need to be doing well then the fear of them drops and decreases and then the criminals come in and they can be as loud and violent as they want to be and nothing's happening to them how many times have you been seeing in the news of a multi uh, persistent repeat offender being arrested for possession of a gun like they they have lived a life of crime they've got multiple convictions under their belt they're a convicted felon they get caught with a gun what happens they get a plea deal they get put on probation and they're back on the street back doing the same things they were doing when they get caught they're not reformed they're not changed they're still vicious and violent as they were How many times have we seen in these officer-involved shootings and line-of-duty deaths that they're dealing with someone who is a convicted felon, a person who is out on probation, out on parole, or they're out on bond? How many times have we seen officers seriously injured and or killed by people like that? Too many times. If those people that they were dealing with were locked up in a concrete box where they belong, these officers would not have been injured and or killed by them. So something, multiple things are going to have to change in our society if we do not want to see things ending up like it is in Mexico and other 
parts of the world where the criminal elements are in charge. So enough ranting. I started this video with the in, with the intent of just talking about parking, <laughs> uh, you know, finding safe places to park your car at, you know, keeping the car in drive, so that if you need to speed away, speed away, you know, don't stay in the death box. Uh, and then it kind of went off into this rant. Uh, things happen, <laughs> so I'm gonna end it at this. Um, Whenever some more footage um, and information comes out about this incident, I will, of course, do my Monday quarterback review on it. So t stay tuned for that. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.